Okay, so now up till now we've had all these emitting from a central point, but our original idea was to make the text explode. So somehow we have to arrange the beginning position of these particles in the same shape that the text underneath was. Okay, uh, otherwise it's just not going to look convincing. So let's take the text, let's duplicate it, duplicate the layer. Let's just put it into the exploding shards group for a minute. Let's now, one thing we're going to have to do, uh, it's been crashing loads. Now, as it is, I cannot drop this onto where I want to put it because it will just crash. So let's... Right. And this shape, image source, random fill, and the image source. Now, before I drag it onto that image source, I want to go back and change the properties and make it normal. So it's just uh, it's just the basic text shape. So and we're going to turn it off because we don't need it. And just for the time being, we're going to go back to the beginning of where we want the explosion to happen. Let's move, let's move that, so that, okay, I just want to turn off, so I can see what I'm doing, I want to turn off the original group, okay, now, we go to our emitter properties, and we'll see that we've got random fill and our image source. So we're going to take this image source and we're going to make that text. So now the particles will start their life scattered around the shape of that text. Now at the moment that doesn't look particularly great because we haven't got a lot of particles. But if we, in our admitter, we start life with let's say a thousand particles yeah here we go we see that actually that they are going to start off randomly scattered throughout the text okay right so we've randomly filled the shape of this text with uh, the particles that we created, but just to make it a little bit more interesting looking, I'm going to go to the particle cell controls, and I'm going to go down and click additive blend. Okay, now so this um, rather than having them appear on top of each other and block the one behind. It's going to add all of them together. So where there's lots of them, it's going to make them whiter. Uh, but as they spread out, as we see here, less of them, they will become less white because less of them are overlapping. And that's just a nice little uh, uh, effect that I, I like. Okay, so now we've got them. Uh, their starting place is arranged as some nice text. I now want to see how that relates to the text we had before. Now, for some reason, it's not exactly in the same place. So let's instead take our emitter layer and let's make the origin so that it fits with the shape we're trying to emulate exploding. So let's... Okay, right, so now let's see what this um, looks like. So let's run it from the beginning. OK. 
Okay, so that's going to it's going to look all right as long as we make the timing of the text and the appearance of it turning into particles a transition. Now we want to kind of hide the fact that the other text is disappearing because this is a cheat. It's not really exploding, it's just going to look like it is. So we're going to swap the text for the explosion. Now if if I look here, if I've got enough particles, maybe I'll add a few more particles. Let's take um whoa, whoa, whoa. So let's take the particles, increase them a bit more. Right, so we've got 1700. So now I'll go a few frames forwards. See, so it's pretty much okay within. Okay, so within four frames, it's going to pretty much cover the whole lot. So I can safely make the text disappear at that point. Now, there's other things I can do to make it look more real as well, but we'll do this first. So, I'm going to get my text layer. And I'm going to go to do my text group here. I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to keyframe the opacity from this point then I'm going to go forwards a few frames five four okay right let's do it on that one so now I'm going to keyframe this as well and then I'm going to turn that down to zero so basically it will disappear behind the text but you're you're not gonna see that in fact I might, I might make it happen quicker now, another thing we can do to enhance the fact that it is just going to disappear, so we can just before we make the switch, we can have the text start to glow more, like there's something going to happen. So let's keyframe a second of um, the effects on the text. Now the aura, basically, we can s change over time. So let's take a um, So we'll go one second in, then let, let's take, uh, go to the filters, aura, let's keyframe brightness. So let's stick on 90 and we'll go back to where it is here, where we want to start making the switch and let's turn that up. Okay, then we're going to do a similar thing for the outer radius. So let's go back to our initial frame. Let's keyframe the outer radius. We liked it as it was there. Let's go back here to make our outer radius another keyframe. And then we make that even more extreme. So now. We probably want it to happen a bit quicker so it looks more like it's something that's sudden that's happening to it. Now if you want to change um, the timing of a keyframe, uh, you just select the layer that you want to change, the keyframes on, and then you click down here and you will see
nothing. Okay, it's a bit of a bug in the program there. Okay, so I'd have to click somewhere else and click back again. So let's have a look at this keyframe. So let's take the outer radius and make that happen much closer to the event. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Bang, that looks a bit more sudden. Okay. Um, maybe not quite so sudden. Okay, so um, here we've got the basic idea of it exploding. Now, as you can see there, I don't think that the text disappears fast enough. So let's um, two, three, four, five, yeah. Okay, let's go to the keyframes and let's select the text layer, the text group. And we can see our opacity has gone to zero at this point. But let's make it much quicker. So let's go bang, bang, bang. Okay, um, one of the other things you could do, you can mess around with the 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 random seed of the, of the emitter because um, if you generate a different random seed, the whole thing will do it in a different way. So now I think actually that's. That's going to be slightly better. Okay, so I'm going to keep that one. And have a look. Okay. Yeah, it looks okay. Uh, it doesn't look as good as the original, but that's because. Um, I've actually added some refinements um, in, but it's really a case of tweaking parameters and keyframes until it looks uh, until it looks real. Then, uh, once I've done that, I added um, a camera and some lighting, and I actually had the camera dolly in. Uh, move in towards the ice and the particles as the explosion happened uh, and also um, the lights helped uh, make it look a little bit more natural because um, some particles would reflect more than others and things like that so depending on the close-up it added a bit more realistic atmosphere to it so let's render this and see what it actually looks like Okay, so um, there you have it. Um, there's a lot of refinements you could add, um, and it's really just up to you um, how you want to how you want it to look. But that should give you an idea of the basic principles.